On Thursday, the Carolina Hurricanes were able to bounce back from some ugly losses and appear to get the ship right. Find out how they did it and what all happened in that game against the Edmonton Oilers in this episode of Locked on Hurricanes. Your Locked on Hurricanes, your daily podcast on the Carolina Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Caniacs. I'm your host, Jared Ellis, and you are listening to Locked On Hurricanes on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And as always, thank you for making Locked On Hurricanes your first listen of this Saturday evening. And this episode is brought to you by the lovely folks over at Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. And don't forget to follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at LO underscore Hurricanes and myself on Twitter at Jared Ellis underscore 96. And in today's episode, we'll be recapping Thursday's game against the Edmonton Rollers. I do apologize for this episode not coming out yesterday because the power went out here in North Raleigh because there was a wreck and over a thousand people were without power in my little area so i do apologize but we're here to talk about it now and not only are am i going to recap the game we're also going to hear from yester foss jordan martinuk andre special and rod Brendamore all on this game as against the edmonton oilers and this was a game that you know you guys remember that i was saying that i felt the hurricanes were going to come in with a chip on their shoulder with this game you know they had the ugly losses to florida and to toronto this was a revenge game almost like obviously i know you know you're not uh it's not like you know the player you know you traded or anything like that but yeah it, it almost had like a revenge game feel uh the, the hurricanes you know just getting embarrassed in those games against toronto and florida and even before then yeah they're squeaking out wins but yeah they're for so long yeah, it's like oh you yeah, know we got a great first period Crap, second period, and then you know we're eking out the wins in the third, and you know the Hurricanes, you know the, this game against the Oilander, uh, Oilanders, uh, I don't even know where I got that from. Uh, Oilers, uh, this was exactly what I feel this team needed at the time. At least I hope that carries over into tonight against Colorado. We'll just have to wait to see, but. You know, with this game, you know, something we've been talking about all season long is since Captain uh, Jordan Saul mentioned it, uh, no passengers in this game. You had, you know, everyone was chipping it. 11 different players uh, tallied points in this game. You had, you know, the goal scores. We'll go through them first. Andre Sveshkov, the new owner and quote-unquote daddy of the Edmonton Oilers, uh, getting yet another hat trick against this team. Both of his hat tricks this year have came against the Edmonton Oilers. So he is the new Oilers owner. He is the Oilers daddy. And, you know, uh, if no one has updated the Wikipedia page yet, they uh, should probably go ahead and do that. Uh, but you also had Brent Burns netting another power play goal. Hurricanes power play has been iffy at best this year. So even though yeah they went one for four on the power play, they went one for four, and so many it's zero for four, zero for five, zero for three, whatever it may be, they got a power play goal, and I'm happy with that. I am so happy with that, and it being Brent Burns, of course we love that. You had Jordan Stahl uh, finding the back of that, Jordan Martinuk finding the back of the net, Jesper Frost finding the back of the net. Hurricanes won this game. Uh, seven to two, if I remember correctly, uh, if my math is correct. But, you know, it's, you know, you got your top guys. You got Andre Spechkov, the guy you want to score goals. He's scoring goals. Brent Burns, the guy you expect to score goals, he's doing it. Jordan Salt, he's doing it. Jordan Martin, he's doing it. Jesper Foss, he's doing it. Guys that you aren't, you know, the goal scorers, you know, those last three, they're doing it as well. And that's what we need. We need got the, the top guys showing up. We need the depth guys showing up. And, you know, this season, you know, just Jordan Martin, like he has been 
on a different level. Uh, I think I've said it before, but I feel that when he's healthy now, I, I think that is probably the biggest factor here of he's healthy. Uh, and also, yeah, I feel that him getting put on waivers, assigned to the AHL, and then obviously you know, brought back, but I feel that sub has lit a bit of a fire under him and you know, getting him going. And I think, yeah, he's really doing well on the third line as opposed to the fourth line, you know, with Jordan Martinuk and, or with Jordan Stahl and Yester Foss. He's doing really well there. So I wouldn't expect that to change anytime soon. I, I, I know a lot of folks, you know, you know, whine and complain about four, first line Jordan Martinuk, and yeah, that is what it is. Yeah, we've, we've read uh, Rod Brindamore's uh, comments, you know, on that stuff at this point. Uh, but, you yeah, know, that, that is what it is. Uh, you know, all those guys, they're showing up. And then not only that, you know, you got all the guys counting assists. Cabo Teravine, two assists. Sebastian Ajo, two assists. Marty Natchez, two assists. Jordan Martinuk, also assists. Jacob Slavin, assist. Brady Shade, assist. An assist. Uh, Jesper Faust, uh, an assist. Uh, Calvin Hahn getting an assist. So many guys are showing up here in this game, and that is what we need. And not only all that, Piotr Kochekov, an absolute madman out there in that game against the Oilers, and you know, really proving you know, that he very well could be the future of the Hurricanes in between the pipes. Because uh, just before, you know, I went to record yesterday afternoon before the power went out, it was announced that Frederick Anderson was placed on injured reserve. So we'll see how that plays out. So far, I I haven't seen anything about, you know, what the deal is going to be with him. I, I saw someone, you know, did the math. You know, he's obviously out tonight against Colorado. He could be back at, at the bare minimum, could be back in time for the Chicago game. But... That is the bare, that is the absolute minimum time he would be out. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see with that. Uh, it, this is going to be interesting to see how it plays out. If Kyoder uh, continues just on the, if, you know, that came against the Oilers, you know, just wasn't a one-off. If he can, you know, continue that and just kill it out there, you know, He's shown a lot of promise in the little bit we've seen with him. You know, I said that I think next year we could see him make the jump up to the NHL because remember, after this season, Frederick Anderson and Antti Ranta both are unrestricted free agents. They both signed two-year deals. So we'll see how things go. And I've talked about it many times that pretty much ever since Cam Ward's prime ended, the Hurricanes haven't had a legitimate, like, long-term answer. You know, Cam, he played past his prime here. You know, we've talked about that at length. We're not going to talk about it today. But, yeah, Peter, you know, he wasn't, uh, or, you know, first off, Scott Darling, you know, they brought him in. That wasn't it. Peter Mrazek, you know, it's short-term. Curtis McAuley, short-term. James Primer, short-term. Alex Dukovich, I Someone a lot of folks thought, you know, could be the future. Now, he looked great. He was called a finalist here. He gets traded to Detroit. And now, yeah, you bring in Frederick Anderson, Ansi Ranta. Yeah, and, but they're both two-year deals, uh, both on the wrong side of 30, injury prone. And, yeah, that's not going to be your goaltender 10 years from now. So, you know. We'll wait and see, you know. I, I think this could be a big, big opportunity for him. And, you know, with this game against the Oilers and likely a decent stretch here, he should seize this opportunity. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I, I, do, I don't think it'll be the same situation as a couple years ago when Ned had his uh, Calder finalist season where you're kind of rotating three goalies when we had Peter, James, and Ned. I don't think it'd be like that. I think whenever Freddie's back, like uh, Piotr will get sent back down uh, to Chicago. I think that'll be the case uh, unless, you know, he just blows everyone's mind with his play, which wouldn't surprise me. But, you know, that's just something we'll have to wait and see. But, you know, getting back on track with this game, you know, Andre Svechkov, he had his second career regular season hat trick. 
second hat trick this season, second hat trick against the Edmonton Oilers, and absolutely crazy. He is the uh, fifth player since relocation to have multiple hat tricks in a season, uh, adding his name to Kevin Adams, Buffalo Sabres GM, uh, Sammy Kapanen, uh, Jeff Skinner, and Eric Salt. So congratulations to Spatch, uh, first and foremost. You know, absolutely killing it. And also, yeah, he is the first player from the 2018 draft, or at least at the time of uh, that game. I don't think it's happened since then, but he was the first player from the 2018 draft to get to 100 goals. Uh, as of right now, he's on pace for 64 this season. Absolutely killing it. I said at the beginning of the season that I thought we would see Andre's uh, first all-star appearance uh, this year, and he is absolutely playing like that. The dude is absolutely killing it, and he is on another level this season. If you've been around for a while, you remember uh, when I was when he signed that eight-year extension uh, last summer, I said that you know I want to see him take these kinds of step forward you know, as a leader, getting out on the ice, you know, Putting pucks in the back of net, being more of an offensive force. You know, it's obviously a, a good defensive force, but you know, take the next step with the offense. Uh, he got his first 30 goal season last year, and he's on pace to more than double that this year. You know, we'll see what happens, but he's he's absolutely stellar. He, like I say, he is the new owner and daddy of the Edmonton Oilers. Plain and simple. Uh, but you know, not only you know with Svetch, uh, no other season for the Hurricanes and Whalers, for that matter, has seen more than one uh, team hat trick through the first 14 games because Sebastian Ajo, he had a hat trick against Buffalo back on the 4th of November. So the Hurricanes are killing it offensively, at least, you know, right now. I mean, they've had their lulls and whatnot. Uh, you know, the offense looking like a dry Thanksgiving turkey, but you know, as a whole, you know, Hurricanes offense, you, you've got guys stepping up, and that's what we need. And I really hope this is something that can be sustained. I, I don't feel, you know, Svetch is going to have, you know, hat tricks against, you know, a bunch of teams. And, you know, I, but, you know, and does he hit 64 goals? Probably not. Yeah, I'd love for him to. Uh, that'd be freaking awesome. Uh, but... Do I think Svetch is going to hit 64 goals? No, I don't think you know, that's going to be you know, what he hits. Uh, but you know, he, he's taking the steps towards that we need him to, and, and that is big. And you know, we're talking a lot about Svetch, and let's hear what he had to say post game uh, against that Oilers, against the Oilers that night. But also a nice night for you, a hat trick, and that's number 100, and you got to do it at home. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's special for sure to be at home and uh, score my 100 goals here. And, uh, you know, it just uh, it's been amazing. But, uh, yeah, it was a couple of tough games, you know, for us. And uh, we balanced back. We played hard today. And uh, all the boys uh, did a great job for sure. Do you like the challenge of going against McDavid and Dreisaitl? Does that, yeah, does that yeah. elevate your game at all? Well, obviously, you know, you know they're out there and uh, you got to try to play, be careful against those guys. And, uh, you know, they one of the best uh, players in this league and uh, you got to expect for sure. Did it, did it, does it pick up a team when a goaltender makes a play like a diving poke check on a breakaway? Yeah. Does it kind of give you a little something extra after that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, it was a special play by... By coaching and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, just I feel like he gives you more confidence and uh, you want to play for him as well, you know. And uh, especially that's uh, his uh, his first game uh, this season, and uh, you know it was awesome for sure. What was his what, what was his mood like before the game? I mean, it's yeah, you know, he's uh, he usually like kind of easy going, but uh, in a game he's like try to focus uh, and uh, you know whatever I, I say to him on the intermissions, uh, he kind of like don't respond it and uh, he just try to focus. I guess. What do you say to him? I just say, hey, good job, like keep it going, and he's like, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did he tell you to keep scoring? Uh, he said it after the game, so it was, it was nice of him, yeah. Was that was that third goal your favorite goal? It seemed like you really liked that you, you kind of got three whacks at it and, and, and elevated it in. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a head trick, you know, it's always uh, going to make you happy, and, uh, you know, that just the uh, way it is. You get to keep the hats? Uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't see you them yet, so <laughs> I got to see them. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so with Fetch, uh, you, know, you listen to that, you know, just Piotr, uh, and, you know, we talked about him, you know, some already, but, God, the kid is so good. 
and this fetch is too it's so freaking good man and i am really looking forward to seeing what you know we see from obviously fetch the rest of the season and then Piotr as well you know you know you heard andre talk about you know how he's like just really focused on the game and you know we at this point we've all seen the highlight real save of uh, Piotr just absolutely just going out there on his back and getting the save absolutely crazy we, we love it we absolutely love to see it and I'm really looking forward to seeing what we can see from him this year you know we saw a little bit last year of you know what he can bring to the table and you know I felt that you know he needed like another season you know down in Chicago just to get used to the uh, North American uh style of game and it's absolutely stellar stellar uh, and amazing and you know for a little bit there i'm like hey, could he get a shout out could he you know i didn't think he would you know i mean you are going against the Oilers. you are going against Connor mcdavid only on dry side you know so it's hard to get a short shut out in that regard but you know Piotr is so good and you know here's Svech, you know talking about him and just how good he is and Svech. Sebastian, not you, <laughs> but yeah, obviously you guys know you. my dog's name is Sebastian, or one of them. Uh, you know, and then Piotr and Marty Natchez and his, uh, yes, Spirit Cup Miami. There's so many things you got. They're so young, and they have such bright futures ahead. And it's just, you just get so excited about it. And you know, you were talking about young guys. You look at older guys. You know, like uh, Jordan Martin, and, and just. Yeah, I talked about earlier, you know, just how he has really seemed to reach another level almost this season. And, like, there's a fire under him this year. And we'll talk about Jordan Martinuk and hear what he had to say right after this quick break, folks. Now, folks, uh, college football season, you know, it's coming to an end before we know it. And the Hurricanes, they're in the – midst of their season taking on the Colorado Avalanche tonight in Denver. So if you're wanting to place on any place to bet on any of those games or another game, betonline.net has you covered. Betonline.net is your number one source for all of your sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball to soccer and esports and more. BetOnline has you covered. AW Full Gear is right around the corner. I'm so hyped for that world championship match against John Moxley at MJF. I can't wait for it. And if you're wanting to know who to bet on, bet online has you covered. And they also have you covered for all of your sports podcasts. You can find those at Bet Online as well. So Bet Online is, of course, always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. So head over to the website today. Or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Now, folks, I've talked about how I feel Jordan Martinuk is kind of on a different level this season. He he's really got things clicking, and things are going right for him. You know, he's healthy, which I think is a big thing, and he's also just in a good spot to succeed. You know, with his line mates this season, we got to hear from him after that win against Edmonton, and this is what Marty had to say. The, the, the team effort and especially coming off a game you don't expect a seven goal game after playing on the road that little of everything coming together right yeah yeah it's i think it's almost better when you know what you're up against those are their best player in the league and probably i don't know second he's right up there too so um i think everybody was pretty dialed in knowing the challenge that you gotta you gotta be dialed in against those guys and um, their supporting cast is playing really good right now too. So it was a good game to come back to. It was fast, and I think just what we needed. Is there something about? Can you describe your goal to us? Because it was something to watch. You hit it once. You hit it twice. It was, yeah, yeah, I just tried to get underneath the D man, and then I I seen it come back out, and I just hit it. I I was I was just trying to keep it keep it there. I wish I had that uh, athletic ability, but hey, it worked. And I'll I feel take like it. Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge. Well, <laughs> I need about another 400 million to get Aaron Judge. But <laughs> timely goaltending is always important. Those two early oh. saves, the shorthanded one, and then the 
Yeah, the breakaway, breakaway one where he went full Spider-Man. Yeah, that was, that was cool. So, yeah, he he played great. And he played great for us last year. We know we know what he is. And I think practicing with him and knowing how, like, he just competes. And that's something that you want out of your goalie. And, um, yeah, it was, it was good that we gave him a little bit of support. And he... Uh, just stood tall back there. We hear the cliches about goals at the end of the period can really lift a team or break another team. Do you feel like that that was true tonight? And what's that? What is that actually like for you guys when when that happens? Uh yeah, no, it's I. You never want to give one up, and I, you never. It's always nice to get one with a little bit of time left, and it just gives you the little. What is that? I don't know what that made. That made a three one or three one or four one. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the first. Yeah, yeah, so it's it's just nice to have that going into the next period and uh, a little buffer you can always you always like a buffer so um yeah those are big goals and definitely if you're on the other end of it it hurts a little bit yeah so in listening to jordan martinuk and you know just how <laughs> talking about his goal you know you i'm really just as a fan of him i'm really glad that we're seeing him get things going and get it going right because you know, for the past couple of seasons, last year especially, and you know, to kick off this season, a lot of criticism, and you know, things are going right for him. And you know, we've all seen the goal, you know, how he was you know, batted it back a couple of times. Heck, uh, Svech's uh, hat trick goal, his hundredth career goal, his third goal for the night. Same way, you know, kind of you know, batting it up a little bit, and you know, it was. It's really nice to see a guy like Jordan Martinick get rewarded for, you know, all his hard work and get things going right. And it, the season is obviously still very early. And injuries, you know, have been, you know, taking their toll and uh, you know, racking up, you know, on him. And uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see how things go for Marty this year. I, uh, you know, it's still very early. So I'm not, you know, ready to say, oh, this is going to be a career year for Jordan Martinuk. But, you know, everything is going right for him right now. We're going to, I'm looking up literally as we speak to see, you know, what his um, career high is. Uh, and, you know, things are going really right for him right now. We're in the sort of middle of November now. Uh, you know, we're at, he's at 14 games played, uh, three goals, three assists, six points uh, for the year so far. His um, career high is 25 points. He had it twice, 16-17 uh, season in Arizona with uh, 77 games played, uh, 11 goals, 14 assists. And then the 18-19 uh, season, his uh, first season with the Hurricanes, 15 goals, 10 assists, uh, you know, 25 points. You know, I if he can stay healthy, I think – Jordan Martin could easily have the best year of his career in terms of points, goals, assists. I think he could. I really think he could. He's off to a, a heck of a start. And, you know, we're, we're going to have to wait and see. Uh, I'm not ready to say that yet because of his injury history. I, I just don't know. I, I love Martin. I love him. You guys know this. You guys know, I went in and went out drinking with him uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, if, you know, I did, you know, you know enjoy you know, Jordan Martin and being a fan of him. And you, know, you guys know this you know, at this point. Uh, but, you know, being realistic, I, I'm not ready to say it yet. Uh, I would, let's get to the halfway point of the season before I say that this could, is going to be a career year for Jordan Martin Oak. But it has the makings of a career year for him. I'll say that. I will say that. I, I can say that. I can say that it has the makings of a career year for Jordan Martin this year. But, yeah, everything's clicking for him. 
in this Edmonton game was a high performance from him. And I really hope he can keep it up. But, you know, it wasn't just uh, Jordan Marnock and Andre Sveshkov, you know, that we got to hear from. We also got to hear from Yester Foss, and we also got to hear from Rod Brandmore. And we will hear from both of those guys right after this quick break. All right, folks, we are back, and now it is time to hear from yet another goal scorer. And uh, he did. He did rack up an assist as well. 11 guys, you know, getting points in this game against the Oilers. Yeah, I kind of forget who, who got him. Uh, but yes, for Foss. A goal and an assist, two point night for him. We got to hear from him after that win, and this was what Jesper had to say. Nice to get that one out of the way for yourself. Uh, I'll be honest, it felt pretty good actually. It's been working hard, but uh, I didn't have the bounces so I feel like so I, yeah, I felt good to get a good bounce there. I, I asked Jordan Martin, you know, we hear a lot that goals at the end of the period are so important, whether it's not giving one up or, or getting one. What is that actually like when you come back in the room after the first and after the second, having scored in the in the last minute? I mean, always good feeling. I feel like we, we played a good third period. I mean, we didn't get them much. And of course, we gave them one goal there. But overall, I think we played a, pretty, had a really good game. Even though it was a back-to-back, I thought we had a lot of energy. So, yeah. Pretty good goals for all three of you guys on your line tonight. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like we deserve that. I feel like we've been working hard the last couple of games. Uh, been hard on the parks, but uh, I mean, like you said, I haven't really gone my way. With the bounces, so uh, of course it was, it was a good feeling for us to get a little production. There. Did you feel? Did the group feel good tonight? I mean, having played last night, a tough game. You don't necessarily expect a, an up and down seven goal game coming home from playing 24 hours earlier. I mean, we needed a response. We had a two game that we two games in a row that we lost, so we wanted to have a good, good game today and bounce back and get back on the winning track. So I feel like we we deserved to win today. How much do those early stops by Piotr help help get everyone I mean, in the game? I think he coming in his first game this season, he was uh, outstanding. So good for the group, good for him. So, uh, yeah, good, really good. All right, thanks. Yeah, so in hearing from Gaspar Foster, he's a guy, you know, he's had a really good year last year, but he's kind of been off to a little bit of a slow start this year so far. And for him to you know, appear to be getting going, I, I really love it. You know, again, we talked about it a lot. You know, Jordan Stahl, a captain, and he's mentioned no passengers. We got too many of them. We need everyone stepping up. And yes, for Foss, he's a phenomenal depth guy uh, for the Hurricanes. And you remember last year that Niederreiter Stahl Foss line was the Hurricanes' best freaking line uh, consistently throughout the season. And yes, for Foss was a big part of that. And I think, you know, as the season uh, wears on and, you know, gets going, I really think Jesper Foss is going to get in a groove like he was last year and continue to just be a great depth force that the Hurricanes can rely on. You know, if, you know, top guys aren't uh, going, Jesper Foss is a guy that the Hurricanes can uh, rely on. And, you know, we'll, we'll see how the season uh, plays out for him. You know, again, a little bit of a slow start so far, but you know, as a whole, yeah, you know, he's been a guy that you know, ever since the Hurricanes traded for him, you know, he's done everything they asked, and I'm really looking forward to see what the season holds for him. I really hope you know, he can get things going, going uh, sooner rather than later. Again, yeah, you know, we've seen it yeah before, guys getting off the slow starts. Yeah, you know, a lot of guys we've already talked about tonight, uh, Sebastian Ajo. Andre Sveshchikov, uh, you know, these guys, yeah, they've gotten off the slow starts before. So, yeah, yes, for Foss, yeah, he's, he goes under the radar of just, you know, his role on this team uh, there on that third line. He, he plays a big role for this team, and he's a key piece there on that third line. And I'm really, really hoping that he can get things, you know, going offensively and you know make almost step into that Nino Nita rider ball that we saw last year. You know, your third liner that all right, Sebastian Aho isn't going. Uh Marty Natius isn't going. All right. I'm you know all right, yeah. Last year Nino stepping up, getting the job done. 
this year. I want to see that from Yasser Foss. I, I, I really think he can do it. But, you know, we'll just have to wait and see, you know, how, how it uh, plans out. But, you know, heading into this game, again, you know, Hurricanes were coming off, you know, some ugly losses, you know, against Toronto and against Florida. And, you know, we saw some lines getting shuffled around. And, you know, we talked uh, a lot about things, you know, going right for the Hurricanes. But, you know, things had to go wrong before they did this. You know, the SAT line was back together in this thing in this game against the Oilers, you know, especially Cobb, Ajo, Terabinen. On the third line, you, know, you had Natchez, uh, Kanyemi, and Jarvis. Third line was the only line that stayed the same. You know, we're talking about uh, Jesper Foss and, you know, just how key he is to that line. That line has been great. I want to say, statistically, they've been a top three line in the NHL in terms of their efficiency, which is phenomenal. Uh, and then on the fourth line, uh, Paul Statson uh, slotted back in. You know, alongside Jack Drury and Stefan Nazan, you know, I I thought that it would be um, uh, still Derek Stepan, but they slotted Paul Stassi back in. Everything worked for them. So, you know, going into tonight against Colorado, you know, maybe it stays the same. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. We'll we'll wait and see. And then on the defensive side, you know, things, uh, you know, things uh, changed up there. You know, I you remember, you know, after that game against Florida, I said that I think, you know, Dylan Coughlin needed to sit. He was not good in that game, and that was what happened. Calvin Hahn slotted back in. Talked about it with uh, all the guys that uh, notched up points in that game. Calvin Hahn, he was right there. And, yeah, he looked really good in that game. And Jalen Chatfield continues to impress uh, this year. And, you know, we're talking about all these line shuffles and everything. At the end of the day, it ain't the players making that decision. It's uh, head coach Rod Brittenmore. And this is what Rod had to say after that game against the Oilers. Uh, there, there are quite, a, there are quite a few good things happen tonight. I'll let you pick one. Where do you want to start with the things you liked about tonight? Well, the win. I guess if you want to go in order, but uh, really like you know Coochie's game. I mean that was he came in tough spot against <laughs> you know a high powered team, and you know he made some huge saves there. So. That's the difference in the game for me. It's just, you know, kept us in it there early and um, then we just kind of settled in and, you know, but that was, that was the, probably the, the, the second thing. Well, Foss said after I asked him, you know, you don't expect to see an up and down seven goal game after coming off the road 24 hours early. And his response was good. He said, uh, we needed a response. That's why we had this game. Yeah, well, we did. And, you know, it's tough because it, it's, what is it? I think the previous two games, I think we had some, you know, 80, 90 shots and don't you get one or two goals over the last stretch, you know, you know it was going to even out. It just kind of does, and it's kind of what happened tonight. I don't know that we had a ton of quality chances more than any other of these games, but it just you know, happened to get in for us. So, um, again, I, I thought it was, uh, it was a good bounce back, though. Kuchekov had a couple of early saves. It seemed like stopping the penalty shot. Yeah, and huge. Right. I mean, it's a turning point in the game, I think. At that point, where, um, you know, momentum would just flip, right? And uh, then he had that other breakaway where we kind of, we have the puck at the blue line and we trip on and all of a sudden it's a breakaway. And, you know, those are two right there that, uh, you know, huge saves that could be difference makers. So, um you know, kind of a weird penalty shot we call, but it's you know you, 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 that goes against you sometimes, and that that that's that save is crucial. Svechnikov has the hat trick, second one against Edmonton, but it, I, it it seems funny to say he's coming in with his own, and there's no real good way to describe what's happening. But is there's something elevated there? Yeah. Well, he's been good all year, you know, and uh, we need it. You know, we got we're we got some key guys that aren't in our lineup that score goals, and so. You know, he's he, we're counting on everyone else to really chip in, and you know he's he's been leading the charge. So we definitely, um, you know, we need that out of him. Seemed like that score by Jordan was the second. That one. was a good goal. I mean, that's a huge one too. And in the period, you know, everybody's thinking, okay, I mean, it's, we're in good shape, but now we're in great shape going into the third. So yeah, those are we. we the, the big moments kind of went our way tonight. What, what can you tell us about Terabine and? Then? It seemed like he was okay after the goal and then didn't play enough. Yeah, you know, he tweaked something and just said didn't feel 100%. And just, you know, so, you know, it's kind of the, the cautious age we all live in now with everything. So we just, 
took himself out. He'll get checked out tomorrow, and well, you know, hopefully he'll be all right. Was it good that before he gets hurt, it seems like maybe he turned a little bit of a Yeah, I thought he was playing well. That line was good. and just, you know, again, injuries just kind of things you can't really control. It seemed like it was a classic market. Yeah, for sure. And he's, you know, he's a guy that's been actually not talked about too much. And he's, you know, into the, the scrums or whatever you call these. But uh, he's been solid all year. He's been really effective. And uh, it's nice to see him get rewarded there. Okay. Yeah, so in hearing from Rod Burnamore, you know, talking about this game, echoing a lot of the stuff, you know, we've already talked about tonight. Uh, but, you know, one thing I, I forgot to mention earlier when we we're talking about uh, how good Andre Sveshnikov has been against the Edmonton Oilers, one thing I want to leave you guys with is uh, Sebastian Aja in 12 regular season games against the Edmonton Oilers. He has had 22 points. Absolutely insane. And uh, now I'm thinking about, you know, Rod Burnham mentioning that penalty shot. It's weird. And Gooder coming up big. You know, you love to see it. But, you know, Rod echoing a lot of the things that you have already talked about. And following, you know, that two-assist game against the Oilers, Sebastian Ajo is now fifth on the all-time franchise point list and you know we're going to look to see where he's at because i remember the hurricanes posting about this earlier today so we're going to look and see where he's at just before i leave you guys before the night and again absolutely crazy thing about just you know smashing on it he's so young and he's already fifth all time uh he's at 418 career points fifth all time and yet he's right behind his head coach rod brindamore at 473, uh, who has fourth place. I, I do very well think that, you know, Sebastian Ajo, you know, should things go right, very well past Rod this season. You know, should things, you know, really click for him. Yeah, I, I'm expecting a big year for him. So far, Svetch has been uh, the one that has really uh, showed out so far, you know, between the two of them and capturing, like, the headlines and the highlight reels and all that stuff. But I think Sebastian could do it. Uh, and then, you know, above that, you, know, you got Kevin Minine at uh, 544 points. Eric Stahl at number two at 775 points. I am still holding out hope for him to extend his second, his second place. Just bring him home. Bring him home. And, of course, at number one, you got Ron Francis. Uh, the one that's probably keeping Rod Bridmore out of the Hockey Hall of Fame at uh, 1,175 points as a Hurricane and Whaler. But you know, that does it for this episode of Locked on Hurricanes. If you're listening to it on this uh, Saturday, uh, November 12th, you will know that we got the third year anniversary uh, live stream later tonight. So make sure you come on out to that on YouTube. Of course, it will be available on YouTube later on. It'll be available on all streaming platforms later on as well. So you can go back and listen to it. So I will talk to you guys in the next episode of Locked on Hurricanes, which will be that live stream. And so make sure you are following the show on social media, at, on Twitter and Instagram at LO underscore Hurricanes and myself on Twitter at Jared underscore 96. And I will see you guys in the live stream.